Come here and give the Lord a hand clap. Glory to God. Amen. God bless you. you. May be seated. Thank you, Tim, for opening. Great job. Thank you, worship team. Praise God. Amen. Welcome to everybody. Thank you, our visitors. Great to see you all again. Don and Darlene, amen, old friends, and obviously longtime members of the church. Been here since it started, and uh, we're grateful to them for being here today. And thankful for all of you that have come to share this Sunday morning with us to worship the Lord. Amen. Amen. Bless everybody, all visitors and everyone else alike. Praise God. Amen. I, and I will just mention that uh, the uh, information on the services for Mary Rose are available after church if you need them. If you didn't catch it up here uh, and you want to come and uh, participate in that going home service, that celebration of life, uh, amen, we know you'd be appreciated. And uh, so we'll give that information to you if you if you would like after the service. Praise God. Now, uh, thank the Lord. Amen. It's been a busy, busy week for a lot of people. Praise the Lord. And, uh, but here we are again in the house of the Lord in the presence of God. I have something I, want, I feel like the Lord's been dealing with me about and I want to share with you this morning. Some of it, some of you may have heard some of it before. We kind of interwove and interweave things. Uh, faith comes by hearing and by hearing and by hearing. And so, uh, amen, we, do, we don't uh, apologize for that, but uh, amen. So, it's all good. And uh, now uh, for your punishment this morning. You know, a lot of you may already know that I'm into health food. You know, I, actually, I wanted to be a vegetarian, but I couldn't give up animal crackers. <laughs> I'm struggling with that still. And, uh, praise the Lord. So you can pray with me and pray for me about that. Now, uh, only you can control your narcissism. <laughs> I'll let you think about that for a little bit. But there is some, you know, actually, there's some truth in this, too, because... You know, and I'm not kidding here, but uh, actually we think, generally you would think of narcissism as being a psychological condition, you know, a, a mental issue. But it's actually a human condition. And the truth is we, everybody deals with it. And that is self-consciousness, you know, self-focus. Uh, the scripture deals with it all the time, which is one of the reasons why we have such a problem uh, really walking in all that God has for us. And so, uh, saying that, I, I'm not. That's not criticism. It's just a fact. It, we all deal with self-consciousness, and I don't mean timidity. So that, that can be a, a, a result of it. But self-consciousness can just be you thinking about you all the time. You know, just it's my problem. I'm the only one with the problem. It's all about me. And and uh, you know, God's uh, my true relationship with God is not good enough because of me. You know, all those kinds of ideas. So I'm going to talk to you this morning about something I think is very important. But before I do that, I just want to give you the definition of a paradox. Because that's what much of the Bible is teaching us. And uh, as I give you the definition, you might understand it a little bit better and, and realize what I'm talking about. But God is saying all kinds of things about us that don't seem to be true. I mean, in the natural. When you think of you are the righteousness of God in Christ. Amen. You are the blessed and in the beloved and yet you look at your life and maybe you're not all that righteous sometimes if you're like me you, you, sometimes you're righteous sometimes not so much right and I'm not talking about the 60s term of righteous dude I'm talking about being without sin being perfect being like Jesus amen so the, here's, here's paradox paradox and this is the definition of paradox it's a statement that is contrary to popular belief okay a statement that seems to contradict a statement that is unbelievable or absurd and yet may in fact be true. That's a paradox. And we all deal with them all the time. They're contradictions, you know. On the one hand, we are this, but then we look like something else sometimes, all right? So we deal with the messiness of life and then the mystery of God and the necessity of faith. It's all part and parcel of what we are in this world, right? And here's the thing, we don't, I think it was already said here this morning, but we don't need more how-tos from self-proclaimed religious gurus. Praise God. Doubt is not the enemy of faith. And mystery should not be feared. 
those things ought to motivate us to exercise faith in the Word of God. It shouldn't cause us to draw back. They shouldn't cause us to press in. Amen? So even doubt and mystery have to submit to Jesus Christ. Every knee has to bow. Amen? And every tongue confess. And again, we are the righteousness of God in Christ. That's just an example of a paradox. But the Bible is filled with them concerning us. Our narcissism, our self-awareness, our self-consciousness will cause us sometimes to believe in the natural rather than the spiritual. And that's why we have to die to ourselves. And that isn't about beating yourself up every time you do something bad. It's about getting your focus off of you and onto Jesus. And who you are in Him. Amen. So, I want to talk to you this morning about something that I think may be the extreme paradox. And the reason I'm doing it this way, going to the, what I think is probably one, at least for me, is one of the most extreme, is because if we can gain some revelation from it, it will help us to deal with the lesser paradoxes in our lives that tell us we're doing this, we're doing that, and that therefore that's our identity. We can't be this thing in Jesus because physically or naturally we're doing something that doesn't agree with that. Right. Am I making any sense to you? Yes. Praise the Lord. All right, so let's go. Let's begin, uh, Sheila with Matthew chapter 3, and I want to read verses 1 through 3. Matthew 3 and 1 through 3. Praise God. So in those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea and saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, Make his path straight. Praise the Lord. So the word repentance there, and most of you probably already know this, is the Greek word metanile. And it means to think differently or to reconsider or to change your mind. So that was the primary message of John the Baptist. Repentance. Change your mind, right? So the kingdom of heaven, based on this preaching of John the Baptist, is just one mind change away. Praise the Lord. All right. So repentance gives us access or the changing of our mind gives us access to the kingdom. Yes, it does. And when John would say things like the kingdom is at hand, what he was saying is it's within your reach. Yes. You, you, you can reach for you can have it right now. Yes. It's available right at this moment. Amen. And right after this statement that John makes, he introduces the king of this kingdom that we're talking about. Yes. Amen. Matthew 3.3, 3, he says, For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare you the way of the Lord, make his path straight. So what he's saying here is a highway for our God has been opened up. Amen. A path for us to get to God and a path for God to get to us, his people. Praise the Lord. And he, John goes on to say, Behold the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world, who opens up this pathway or this highway, this means by which God can now come to us and we can come to God. We can become one again. Amen. So the kingdom is now. The king is here. Praise the Lord. Citizenship is being offered to anybody who will enter in, amen, through the born again experience. Praise the Lord. Now remember, in the four gospels where uh, John is preaching this, where it's being recorded, the audience that's being spoken to here were mainly Jews. Now the whole, uh, all, the, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John are in the New Testament, but they are all Old Covenant books. They're all dealing, they're still under the Old Covenant. They're still under the law because the sacrifice of Jesus had not yet taken place. Amen. So with all of this knowledge, these people had understanding. So they, they understood the Messianic prophecies because they had it, all of the Torah, all of the Old Covenant, all of the Old Bible, the Old Testament of the Bible was available to them and they knew it. They were taught it from their earliest years. Amen. So these people had an understanding of the Messianic prophecies about the coming of the king, about the coming of the kingdom. Amen. About the coming of a new covenant even. God had told them, I'm going to write this in your heart. Now, I know you've got tables of law and, and written in stone, but I'm going to, the day's coming when I'm going to come and I'll just write it in your heart. Amen. So with all this knowledge, though, they couldn't make the mental shift, amen, or the paradigm shift, if you will, that was being offered to them. They just couldn't get beyond their natural, their old way of thinking about things. Amen. And so they missed the coming of their king. 
Amen? And they missed His kingdom for the same reason, because they didn't see it happening the way they anticipated it to happen. It wasn't happening according to their traditions. It was happening according to the Word of God, exactly the way God planned it to happen. But they had traditional ways of looking at things that they couldn't get past. Amen. And I'm saying a lot of times the church makes the same mistake. God is doing things all the time in our lives and revealing things to us. But we're, He isn't doing it in the way that we thought He ought to. He isn't doing it according to my old denominational view. Amen. Do you understand? I'm not against all that. I don't think I'm, I'm picking on anybody or, or against any group of people. I'm just saying that's what happens when we get focused in a certain denominational way of doing things. And God shows up and God's not a member of any denomination. He's God. He doesn't have to conform to those ways, those traditions. In fact, he, he won't. And so it's hard for us then to see when God is moving a lot of times because we're expecting Him to happen in a certain way, the way He did 30 years ago or the way He did this or the way He did that. Amen? So God isn't obligated to fit our preconceived ideas no matter how steeped in those traditions we are. Amen? Now, I don't want us to miss the present reality that He is Emmanuel, yes. God with us, yes. right now. Praise yes. the Lord, this very moment. Yes. Amen. He's yes. not just my coming King. Amen. He's my right now King. Yes. Praise God. He's a King and He's reigning right now. Yes. Now look at Romans chapter 5 and verse 17. Praise the Lord. I can't wait because I like to just mess with my own mind and... Because we all got this stuff, you know, don't get me wrong. I'm, it's not like, you know, I've arrived. I'm saying I've got traditions that God's dealing with in me. And it freaks me out every time I'm confronted with it because the first thought is it's a little scary to believe something you've never believed before and think that what if I tick God off by this? Well, look, he's big enough to handle our, you know, because believe me, we've all been outside the lines here at times thinking we had it all figured out and then find out, oh, well, maybe that not. But he didn't write us off. He didn't give up on us. He just continues to deal with us. Amen. So, for if by one man's offense death reigned by one, much more they which receive abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness shall reign in life by one Jesus Christ. If we're reigning in life by Jesus Christ, he's, he has arrived and he is reigning right now. Praise the Lord. So, glory to God. Amen. While they were looking, these Jews... We're looking for this external kingdom, this political power and, and natural kind of manifestations, something much greater, something much deeper, something far more spiritual was actually being introduced and it went right over their head. And we can get so hung up in our religion that Jesus goes right by and we don't even recognize it because we're focusing on the religious aspect of it, right? Look at Mark uh, chapter 10. Verses 13 and 15. And we're still talking about the kingdom. And most of the time in religion, uh, Jesus died for your sins. He saved you. But now you've got to do yeah. a bunch of things yeah. properly or you can lose the whole Very thing. Yeah. Yeah. But he said he died once for all. Yes, yeah. It's finished. Yes. The work is finished. It's just a question of whether we can believe it or not and continue to operate in that. And quit making the focus us, but make the focus Jesus. Amen. It's like John, or like Don was saying this morning from Hebrews, Hebrews 12. It's Him looking to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Praise the Lord. So in the same house, His disciples, or in the house, His disciples asked Him again of the same matter. And He said unto them, Whosoever shall put away his wife. No, this isn't, this isn't what I want. I, I think uh, it's Mark 10, 13 through 15. It's suffer the children to come unto me. He's talking to their, the disciples are stopping these children who are trying to come to Jesus. And they're, they're kind of upset about it. They think they don't have any business being here. This is adult stuff. So, uh, and in the house, okay. Anyway, that's, uh, that's the gist of it. The, 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 the children are coming, but they won't allow them to come to Jesus. And Jesus says, suffer the children to come unto me, for such is the kingdom of God. In other words, what he's saying is... The way you enter the kingdom of God, the only way to enter into the kingdom of God is by grace, right. not by works. It's not by your effort. It's by my just receiving you. Praise the Lord. And so, the, in fact, the, that's innocence is what he's talking about. Yeah. Children are innocent. Yeah. It isn't that they don't do naughty stuff. I've got a lot of children that are not children anymore. They're young adults. They're still my children. 
and we've got grandchildren and great-grandchildren. And they do stuff all the time that's not nice. Right. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Not good. I mean, bad. Bad behavior, yeah. you know. But they're innocent. Yeah. Because they haven't reached the place where they really understand good, evil, right, wrong, all, all these kind of things. So you make allowances for them when they're little. Now, when they're 14, 15 and still doing that stuff, yeah. it's a whole yeah. other ballgame. But I'm talking about when they're three, four, five. You don't have, you don't hold the same kind of, you know, power and, and authority over. You just recognize these are innocent little kids. They'll grow. They'll learn. They'll 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 understand. So this is what he's saying. I say unto you, whosoever shall not receive the kingdom of God as a little child, he shall not enter the kingdom. So the only way into the kingdom, and the reason I know this is through innocence, is because immediately following this. He goes on to say, and you don't have to bring it up, but it, he goes on to say, a young man comes to him and he says, uh, Lord, how, what must I do to inherit eternal life? The, the shift has just gone. Jesus has just said, the only way into the kingdom is by innocence. Right. is by trusting in me and not in yourself. And the very, this guy, obviously, again, it went right over his head because the first thing he says is, what do I got to do? To inherit eternal life, which is the kingdom, which is getting into the kingdom. And Jesus said, okay, he just starts giving him some rules. Because he knows eventually there will be one he can't keep. Right. Because he does exactly that. He says, oh, all these things I've done since my youth. Yeah. Right? And Jesus said, then give away everything you've got. Give it to the poor. Come follow me. Yeah. And the guy went away sad. Yeah. Yeah. I promise you, no matter how many rules you're able to keep, I'll find one you can't keep. Right. Amen. Amen. That's why, that's what the point of the rules are, is to get us to the end of ourselves. Yes. To get us to the place where we have to yes. say, whoa, I need a Savior. Yes. I need somebody that will give me a clean slate, that will make me innocent so I can enter into the kingdom, because I can't do it. Yes. Praise the Lord. Okay, so this, what was happening is, they're looking for, these guys are looking for some new thing, new rules, some new regulation or whatever, and something of eternal value was taking place. A spiritual dimension from heaven was coming and invading. Heaven was invading the earth. Yes. Amen? So look at John chapter 18, verses 36 and 37 now. John 18, 36 and 37. So Jesus answered and said, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, then would my servants fight that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now is my kingdom not from hence. Now here's what I want you to recognize is he's not saying my kingdom can't be in this world. He's just saying it's not of this world. In other words, it doesn't originate here. It originates from someplace else, but it can be here. So Pilate therefore said unto him, Art thou a king? And then Jesus answered, Thou sayest that I am a king. To this end was I born, and for this cause came I into the world, that I should bear witness unto the truth. Everyone that is of the truth hears my voice. Praise the Lord. So, praise God. What God, what He's doing here in, in verse 36 to 37 is that He's trying to explain that there's something supernatural mm -hmm. that you're not getting right. that you're still looking amen for a rule or a regulation to keep and it's not about rules or regulations praise the Lord yeah. it's about a kingdom right. amen it's about Jesus invading this earth it's about heaven coming here amen so this is more than this is about more than going to heaven although heaven in that sense is absolutely true Amen. Matthew 6, 28 through 33. Just bear with me because I'm trying to, I want, when I get to where I'm trying to go, I want you to be there with me when I get there. Praise the Lord. So hopefully I don't mess all that up in the meantime. And why take you thought of Raymond? Now just think about this scripture for a minute. Why take you thought of Raymond? What are you worrying about your clothes for? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. Part of God's creation, right? They don't do a thing. They just, there it is. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? 
For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, these are the unbelievers in that time, for your heavenly Father knoweth that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and, all his, and his righteousness, and all these things will be added to you. Amen? That's a picture of the Garden of Eden. God supplies all of their needs. They don't have to do anything except seek the kingdom, except stay in tune and in focus with God, and all of their needs are met. All right, now that's important to where we're going here. So we live so far below our privileges and our rights as citizens of the kingdom. Amen. The kingdom of God right now. Amen. And the reason that we, we live beneath it is because we have this uh, some glad morning mentality. You know, in the sweet by and by. I'm not saying that isn't true in terms of death and resurrection, but it's not true for us. We, we push everything off into the future. Well, it's some glad morning. You know, yeah. no, now, today's the glad morning. Today's the day of salvation. Today is the day that we can enter into the kingdom. We don't have to wait, you know, for another 40 years or 50 or 60 or whatever it might be. Yes. Amen. We have it here and it's available. But it's this sweet by and by mentality that keeps us from actually entering in and receiving what God wants for us. His message was about abundant life yes. here and now. Yes. Not after you die. We know that's good after we die. The, the yes. Death has lost its sting, but I'm not dead yet. Yes. Yeah. Amen. And so I need a little something here yes. and now. Yes. Praise God. Restoration. Redemption. Amen. It's more than just going to heaven. Right. Amen. If you, if you restore something or if you redeem something, you restore it to its original condition. Am I right? Yes. Simple definition, right? So... To be redeemed or to be restored means that God has put us back in the original condition, which we talked about already, the innocent. Enter the kingdom that way. That's how Adam and Eve, just immediately with it. All right, so look at, let's look at this. Genesis chapter 1, verses 6 through 8. Genesis 1, 6 through 8. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters. Let it divide the waters from the waters. And God made the firmament and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters which were above the firmament. And it was so. And God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. All right. Now that's the original state. Right. Of creation. Right. Amen. The waters that were above the firmament hang in what we call today the clouds. Right. Right. All right, the water that was under the firmament is gathered into what we call the seas, the oceans, the lakes, the rivers, ponds, you know, that sort of thing, right? So that is the firmament, that, or that is the uh, waters that are beneath the firmament. So the firmament, which is what is between the waters above and the waters beneath, that word firmament means material uh, consistency. In other words, it's tangible, it's touchable, it's feelable, it's, it's strength and support, praise the Lord. Yeah. And that is what is between the above waters and the beneath waters, right? That's not complicated. So we are standing in the firmament, are we not? Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right, now look at verse 8. God called the firmament heaven and the evening and the morning were the second day. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> praise the Lord. God called where we're standing heaven. Yes. Jesus. Lord. Yeah. So originally, heaven wasn't somewhere out there in space somewhere. It wasn't some distant, far off planet never discovered. Amen. It was between the above waters and the beneath waters. <laughs> to be perfectly clear, it's where we're standing yes. right now. Yes. This Jesus. moment. Yes. Praise the Lord. My point is this, before the fall, heaven and earth were not separate. That's right. That's right. Heaven and earth were integrated. They merged together. They were one. And that's why Jesus would pray when he came, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. He, he was praying for that. He had to die in order for that to happen. Praise God. He was praying for restoration. He was praying for 
things to be the way they were originally, to be restored. He came to redeem the fallen creation. Praise God. That's why we're supposed to seek first the kingdom of God. Amen. Because in the kingdom of God, all these things are given to us. They're added to us. We don't have to struggle for them. We don't have to fight for it. We don't have to cheat and lie and sneak and everything else. No, if we're there in the kingdom, God supplies all of my needs according to his riches and glory. The way it was originally, which is where we've been restored to. And that's the reason for all the things that we talk about confessing the word and, and saying what God says about you. Not just for some random rule to keep, but so that we can identify with this reality. Because if we can ever get there, all of my needs are going to be met. I don't have to worry and fuss and carry on, amen, and follow a whole bunch of rules and regulations. I just got to believe, amen, that I have been redeemed. That I am back in the original condition that I was in, amen, before Adam fell. Praise the Lord. Jesus ultimately became the interface to bring both of these realms back together. That's what Adam did. When Adam fell, he separated heaven from earth. And Jesus came to redeem us. What? To bring heaven back to earth. Praise the Lord. He would reconnect heaven and earth. The visible and the invisible. The human and the divine. It would all be merged together into Him. All right, Ephesians chapter 1 and verse 10. I mean, if this doesn't excite you, I don't know what can. Because this is just so, such a mind blow away from what we have all just kind of focused on all of our religious lives. It's a mind change away from the kingdom. From actually experiencing it. It's one repentance away, amen, from experiencing the kingdom of God. It's at hand. It's available, praise the Lord. But you've got to repent to get it. You've got to change the way you think in order to operate it, in order to receive it. So that in the dispensation of the fullness of times, He might gather together in one all things, both which are in heaven and which are on earth. Even in Him. That's what He did. That was His reason for coming. Now, if Christ is in you, and you are in Christ, we got the same reality going on, amen, if we just understood it and lived from that reality. Praise the Lord. So Adam had both of these realms existing in him. He had the best of both worlds. He had the natural, and he had the spiritual. Amen. He had the human and the divine. To the point where when I read the book of Genesis, I wonder... Was Adam in the garden? Or was the garden in Adam? Yeah. Or both? Yeah. Right? I mean, read it and just, it, it, you know, I mean, it just gets you going. You're thinking, what, what is this? Yeah. Amen. Look at Psalms 148, verses 1 through 5. Praise ye the Lord. Praise ye the Lord from the heavens. Praise Him in the heights. Praise Him all His angels. Praise ye Him all His hosts. Praise ye Him sun and moon. Praise Him all ye stars of light. Praise Him ye heavens of earth, or heavens of heavens, and ye waters that be above the heavens. Let them praise the name of the Lord, for He commanded, and they were created. Praise the Lord. So here's what I'm saying. That, with that being the context, on the morning of the sixth day, while angels are creating this atmosphere of worship that we're reading about right here, they're creating this environment of worship, invisible, but praising God, right? Amen. God was creating in the visible, in this realm, everything that He was in the invisible realms. Absolutely. So that everything that God created would continually declare God. Whoa! I mean, come on! That's what he was doing. That was the reason for Adam in the first place. That was the reason for the creation of the earth. So that God could be revealed. So that God could be known. Everywhere. In everybody. Amen. Alright, Romans chapter 1 verses 19 and 20. See, we've played around with religion for so long we don't even know what good news is anymore. Good news is not here's some more rules to keep. No. 
Because you couldn't keep the last ones we gave you. Good news is, I ain't got no rules. Praise the Lord. I got Jesus. I got salvation. I've got a kingdom. Hallelujah. I've got innocence in the eyes of God. That's not talk, I'm not talking about just go out and be a fool. But we do that even when we're saved. Well, okay, so I do. But it happens. We, and then we're ashamed and we're humiliated and we're embarrassed. And we can't look at each other eye to eye because I did this stupid thing or thought this stupid thought or said this stupid thing. I'm stupid. I'm a human. But I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am born again. I am a God man in this earth. Because of what Jesus did. Not because of what I'm doing. Praise the Lord. I'm innocent. Amen. Don't judge me. My granddaughter loves to say that. Don't judge me. She's right. She's already been judged in Jesus. Because that which may be known of God is manifest in them. And them would be in us. For God has showed it unto them. For the invisible things of Him from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even His eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Praise the Lord. Looking at Jesus. I don't want to look. Praise the Lord. I know I need, a, I need a haircut, right? But that's okay. I don't know if he had long hair or not. I've only seen pictures. Praise God. I'm just saying, on the morning of the sixth day, God said, let us make man in our image after our likeness. God reached down and he took a lump of red clay, which is where the word Adam comes from, red. He takes this lump of red clay, the earth substance, amen, amen, and he creates a man. And because of that, Adam had access to this realm, the earth, yes. the natural realm. Yes. Yep. But in that same split second, yes. in that same tiny little space in time, God ascended into the deepest realms of the spirit substance, sucked his lungs full of the breath of heaven, uh -huh. and breathed into Adam yes. and interfaced two realms. Yes. Yes. Praise God. Jesus. His Spirit, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the invisible God, the, 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 the eternal force, the, the reality of all things, reaches down into the very depths of Himself and breathes into man the same moment He's creating Him flesh. He's creating Him spirit. That's what happens when we get born again. That's the miracle that takes place. This red, earthy substance receives the breath of God, the Spirit of God. Hallelujah. And we are brought back to the original condition that Adam was in before the fall. Praise God. Red clay of earth and the breath of the Spirit from heaven married both realms. Heaven and earth were located in the very same space. Praise God. Those... Two realms were both located in a God man. Yes. Yes. So much so that Adam was to the earth what God was to the invisible realm. That's called yes. heaven. God trusted him to name the animals. Exactly. To be the keeper of this incredible paradise. Yes. To have authority over it. To have dominion over it. Yes. Adam had relationship with God. He was connected with God. They were one and one. He had authority in the earth and in the heavens. That's why we see in the New Testament, he said, whatever you bind on earth is bound in heaven. If you understand this reality, what you loose on earth is loose in heaven. We've got authority in both places because we are God men. God women, you know. He walked with God. He had divine supply everywhere he went. It was, it was just there for him. All he had to do was just take it. Yes. Just receive it. All right, Matthew 6, verse 31 through 33. See, we are coming to the end, to the return of Jesus. But he's coming back for a church that looks like him. Yes. Amen. That has heaven on earth. Yes. Without spot or without wrinkle. He's the one that does it. We don't make it without spot or without wrinkle. He just says that's what it'll be when I get there and see it. Yes, Jesus. Amen. In other words, 
heaven will be here. He will see the perfection of heaven in the earth. Amen. Because of His bride. Because of people that believe. Again, it's why we're saying confess the word. That's why we're saying say what God says because it's how all of this works. That's how heaven works. Angels aren't saying, I'm not so sure about that. You know, I wonder maybe we ought to have a little, you know, sit down and talk to yourself. No, when God says it happens, it's just done. And we are God in this earth. Amen. I'm not blaspheming any more than Jesus did. Now, I know he got accused of blasphemy, but what he was accused of is exactly what I'm telling you this morning. Yes. 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 So if we're not doing it right, that's the only reason we're not being accused. Therefore, take no thought saying, what shall we eat, what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things, the unbelievers see. For your heavenly Father knows that you have need of all these things. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and His righteousness and all His righteousness and all these things are yours. Yes. It's all in the kingdom. It's all in paradise. It was all in the garden. Yes. It was there. He didn't have to do anything except just go get it. Just peck it, eat it, do whatever you want. He was blessed to be a blessing, right? Yes. Multiply. You know, increase. Enjoy. Take authority. His mandate was to have dominion and subdue the earth to be fruitful, to multiply and replenish the earth. Praise God. And then you know the rest of the story. The serpent crawls in with this performance-based religious idea that if you get enough information about right and wrong, then you'll do the right thing and you'll be like God. In other words, he just ripped the innocent rug right out from under him and now he's accountable. Praise the Lord. He tells Adam and Eve, the minute you get enough information, you can make yourself like God. Adam should have said, I was created in the image of God, in the likeness of God. I'm already like God. Instead, they become the first victims of identity theft. Praise the Lord. So God decides to bring restoration and to renew the dominion mandate. And release the kingdom of heaven back into the earth. And he was going to do it the same way it happened originally. Through a man. The man Christ Jesus. The last Adam. Praise the Lord. Isaiah 7, 14. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son. And shall call his name Emmanuel. The Jews had the scripture. It was, profe- it was prophesying a new covenant, a new kingdom coming, and that's how he described it. A virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and you'll call his name Emmanuel, which is God with us. Right? All right, Isaiah 9, 6 and 7. Scripture all of us apostolics learned early on. It's true. But the problem is, it never went any further. Right. For us, unto us a child is born, unto us a son is given. The government shall be upon his shoulder. His name shall be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. Now we know Jesus entered this world as a man. Now he was filled with God. I mean, he had this, the Spirit of God, yeah. which is what you have once you're born again. Uh-huh. And look what he says about it. He's the Mighty God, the Everlasting Father, the Prince of Peace. There's, you can't separate that. Right. I'm not saying I'm... Almighty God. I'm not saying I'm Jehovah. I'm saying I'm one with Him. Yes. If I'm not, then He's lying. And if He's lying, He's not God. Because right. God can't lie. Right. All right? So, if the increase of His government and peace, there shall be no end upon the throne of David, upon His kingdom to order it and to establish it with judgment, with justice from henceforth, even forever. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will perform it. Praise the Lord. Heaven, that's heaven invading the earth. That's what is being described there. All right, John 3, verse 13. Now, this is amazing to me, but it's how we see it over and over in the scripture, but it's almost like it's so obvious. Right. It's hiding in plain sight, we don't see it. Yeah. Amen. But Jesus is speaking, and he says, No man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, even the Son of Man which is in heaven. Right? Yes. Notice Jesus did not say he was going to go to heaven. He said he was, in fact, right there on planet Earth, standing in heaven. Yes. Yeah. Right? That's what it says. 
He said, no man has ascended up to heaven, but he that came down from heaven, that's me, that's him, he said, even the Son of Man, which is in heaven. He was standing right there in somewhere in the Middle East, you know, around the Sea of Galilee, at least somewhere saying, here's heaven right here. You're looking at it. Praise God. Matthew 3 again, verses 1 through 3, where we started. Can you see why we had to have a mind change? And all the time, you know, we've made this about our behavior when it was really about our understanding. In those days came John the Baptist preaching in the wilderness of Judea, saying, Repent ye, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. For this is he that was spoken of by the prophet Isaiah, saying, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Give him a highway to earth. Yeah. And that's a highway to heaven. Yes. Praise the Lord. Some of you may recognize the uh, yeah. rock and roll there. But uh, how powerful that should have been to that Jewish audience. But how powerful should that be to us? Change your mind. The kingdom is within your reach. It's how simple you say. It's at hand. Let me tell you something. I've been in a lot of revivals over the years and witnessed some. Some I saw on TV were called revivals. Some were maybe, some were not so much. But That kind of repentance will produce an incredible change. Sure will. Not temporary, yes. but everlasting. Yes. When we stop depending on our human abilities yes. and start trusting the indwelling Holy Spirit yes. to do the work in us, yes. the abundant life is the result. Yes. Now what I'm trying to say is both then and now, the greatest need isn't just repentance from sin. It's repentance from dead works. Yeah. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1. I'm going to give you a picture of the greatest uh, altar call that could ever take place. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrines of Christ, let us go on to perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God. Praise the Lord. That would be the biggest altar call ever. Because people have been taught they are justified by their deeds. By their deeds, by their dead works, by their effort, by their human ability. They need to be delivered, not so much from sin as from religion. God took care of the sin. The problem is, we can't get delivered from our religion. We can't yes. get delivered from our traditions. Right. Sad story is 2,000 years into the new covenant, yes. and most have not repented or changed their mind about which covenant they're in. Mm -hmm. wow. And that's why the kingdom hasn't been revealed. Mm -hmm. When you're born again, Scripture says you're translated out of the kingdom of darkness and into the kingdom of God's dear Son. Happened when we got born again. It happened immediately. In all four Gospels, the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven are used interchangeably. They're, the, the, the same, they're both talking about the same thing. The Gospel is not just about how we get from here to heaven, although it has to do with us going to the presence of God. But it's about how we get what's happening there to operate here. It's about God reconnecting or rejoining heaven and earth, giving us access through Jesus Christ, access to heaven's resources, access to heaven's supply, access to heaven's miracles, access to God Himself, access to all that God is and all that we have need of. Jesus demonstrated what the kingdom of God looks like. He went about healing everybody that was sick, casting out devils, right? He said... If I do this by the finger of God, then the kingdom of God has come unto you. Yeah. If, I, if I'm doing, you're, in, you're the same as in heaven. In fact, you are in heaven because in heaven there is no sickness. In heaven there are no devils. In heaven there is no poverty. In heaven there is no law or lack. 
So whenever you see me do this by the finger of God, what he's saying is, you're in heaven. You're not being dealt with by this natural realm. You are overwhelming that natural realm by the supernatural. The gospel is about redemption and the restoration of fallen man. Praise the Lord. Where did we fall from? We fell from heaven. We fell from an idyllic place on earth that God declared to be heaven. Amen. God's original intention for us was to live in paradise with yes. no rules. Yes. Oh, man. How many teenagers want to hear this message? <laughs> I know it's crazy. I mean, it's hard for me not to want to just go get drunk this afternoon. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> Only because I already am. You know what I'm saying? I mean, I'm feeling it. This will get you high. And no hangover. Yes. Tomorrow's going to be just like today, only better. Yes. Praise the Lord. Jesus. God's original intent is to give us paradise here. Yes. Amen. To have this, this loving, safe, uh, unintimidated relationship with God. Yes. Who would be our everything. Yes. Who would be our divine supply. Who would, the scripture in the New Testament says, meet all of our needs according to his works. Amen. And that all of our needs for life and godliness would be met in him. Amen. We can work real hard to get some stuff for life, but you're not going to get like God without God giving it to you. But he wants to give us everything that pertains to life and godliness. So that we can be the righteousness of God in Christ. Yes. And have all of our needs met. Yes. By the supreme source. Yes. There's no other way, church. No. I don't care what, how many gimmicks, how many gurus we come along with from the religious world. That try to give us eight more steps to how we're going to get all of our answers. It ain't going to happen except by this. Yes. Because this is God's plan. Yes. And it's the plan that he had from the very beginning. It isn't a new one. It isn't a plan B. It isn't a backup. It's the plan. It's the original plan. 2 Corinthians 11.3. We're about done here. But I fear, lest by any means, as the serpent beguiled Eve. How did the serpent beguile Eve? Gave him a bunch of religious stuff. Do's and don'ts. Right? He says, I fear that lest by some means this, the, the same devil that beguiled Eve through this subtle kind of religious rule keeping kind of thing. So your will do the same thing. So your mind should be corrupted from what? From the simplicity that is Christ. In other words, from just the simple reality that this is about Jesus and looking unto him, the author and finisher of our faith. He is the beginning and the end, the author. The, the, the Alpha and the Omega and everything in between and all things are come together in Him. Yes. Heaven and earth and everything in Him. Uh, Repent is what I'm saying. Because it's right here. Yes. It's available right now. It's all in the faith that we place in Jesus Christ right. and His finished work. Yes. In His redemption. Right. It's not a law to keep. But it's a life that will keep you. We started in a garden. And that's where God brings us back to. Yes. Let, let me read one more scripture and then we'll close. Revelation chapter 22, verses 1 through 5. I want to show you how God, He just puts this stuff everywhere. It's all woven in here. It's not like you just pick out one scripture somewhere and then try to create a doctrine around. It's there. If it's God, you'll see it over and over and over. It'll just keep coming up. So he says, He showed me a pure river of water of life, clear as crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb of God. Now look at, I want you to keep track of these, this language, the way he's speaking. He showed me this pure river of water, this river of water of life, clear as a crystal, proceeding out of the throne of God and of the Lamb. In the midst of the street of it, and on either side of the river, was there the tree of life, which bare twelve manner of fruits, and yielded her fruit every month, 
and the leaves of the tree were for the healing of the nations. There shall be no more curse, but the throne of God and of the Lamb shall be in it, and his servants shall serve him. And they shall see his face, and his name shall be on their foreheads. And there shall be no night there. They need no candle, neither light of the sun, for the Lord God giveth them light, and they shall reign forever. I'm just going to, I'm not going to the scriptures because we don't have time to go back to all of them, but what does he say? There's a river, right? He will be a river of water flowing from us. Amen. He is the tree. We are the branches. If you abide in Him, you will bear much fruit. We will lay hands on the sick and they will recover. Praise the Lord. And uh, they'll see me face to face. What does the Scripture say? Beholding our face as in a mirror, we are changed into that image. The image of Christ. Amen? From glory to glory. Uh By the Spirit of the Lord. Amen? And He tells us then, and we will reign in life through one Jesus Christ. Everything He's talking about here in the end times, amen, in Revelation 22 is everything we've been talking about this morning. It's the fulfillment. Amen? Praise the Lord. Repent. Change your mind. And heaven becomes our reality right now. Because the kingdom is in you. Praise the Lord. Give the Lord a hand. Praise God. Praise God. Amen. Jesus even said at one point that the, 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 uh, the Pharisees and the, they were attacking Him because He said He was the Son of God. He said, Your own Scriptures say, Ye are gods. And we let this stuff go right by us thinking, well, I don't know, He couldn't have been talking about us. Well, yes, He was. He was talking about everybody born into this world. If they are believers, they are gods. Look, we, I don't know if there's any you know, uh, Darwinists out here, and I don't really care, but I'm just saying... Dogs have dogs. Yes. Cats have cats. Pigs have pigs. I've been, I've, I've been living 70 years and I've never seen any of them have anything but that. Yeah. Now I understand the, you know, the deviation like a wolf becomes you know, uh, tamed or, or you know, kind of controlled and, and now we caught dogs. But they still come from the same species. It's not a different species. Amen. Right? Well, we are sons of God. Yes. You can't be anything but... Some God. You're not the God, but you are a God because you are born in the likeness of Him. You were born from above. You were born of God. Right? Now just natural reality tells us that whoever your daddy is, that's what you're going to be. Right? I mean, if if he's Italian, you're going to be Italian. If if he's a black man, you're going to be a black man. Right? If he's Asian, you're going to be Asian. Yes. Yes. Right? If he's a man, you're going to be a man. Now, you may not be as good as him. You may not be as hardworking. You know, there may be some deviation from that. But you're still going to be a man. You can't be nothing else. And God has borne us into this flesh. And we are God's. And have access to the kingdom of God. That's the message Jesus not only taught, but that's the message he lived. Yes. And he said, these things, I'm not ashamed to call you my brother. Because you've got the same daddy. Yes. Amen. So if the kingdom was in him, the kingdom is in you. The only difference is Jesus knew who he was, and we don't always know who we are. He said, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the Where did he get that? Because Mark hadn't been written yet. He got it from Isaiah 61 because he had searched the Scriptures to see, where am I in here? And that's what we're supposed to be doing. We're not supposed to be looking for a new rule to keep. We're supposed to be looking for me. There I am, laying hands on the sick. There I am, prospering. There I am, delivered. There I am, set free. There I am, God in the earth. There I am, in the middle of heaven. Praise the Lord. Glory to God. Amen, amen. Don't lie to me about who you are. I got your ID. Praise the Lord. God knows who you are. He's got your picture on his refrigerator. Man, that's my kid. 
Right? Let's live like it. Yes. Praise God. Amen. Let's do, hey, man, if I had a really rich dad, I wouldn't be ashamed to spend money. No. As, much, as long as he was willing to give it to me, I'd be spending it and be happy about it, right? Yes. Well, he wants to give us all things. Yes. Praise the Lord. My name is Jimmy. Just keep on Jimmy. You know, I mean, I'll take all you Jimmy. Praise God. All right. Well, I hope I've irritated somebody. I, I, I've said before, generally I know whether I'm successful or not based on the number of people that were uh, irritated. <laughs> Amen. Hey, look, I, I just, we ought to be happy. We ought to be the happiest people on the planet. We ought to be so positive. We ought to be expecting the next best thing is going to happen to me tomorrow. And then the next best thing after that is going to be happening for me the next day. Amen? Believe me. This is the Word of God. This isn't just my twist. This isn't just me trying to start a new denomination. I don't care. I've been doing this long enough. I'm not worried about any of that anymore. I just want everything my dad has for me. Yes. Amen. Yes. Praise the Lord. God bless all of you. Appreciate your patience this morning. Amen. Go in the power of His might. Be who you are. Amen. Yes. Light this world up. Hallelujah. You're dismissed in Jesus' name.